Hi guys, hope you are well and as ever, thank you for coming back to my YouTube channel. And today, uh, guys, as it says on the uh, title, we are going to be brewing some homebrew beer. Yes, we're going to be brewing this beautiful 40 pint pack for £18, that's not too bad. So, if you've never ever done homebrewing before and you fancy getting into it, then this is the video for you. Let's get stuck in. Right, okay, so let's go from the top. What are you going to need? Well, basically, guys, <coughs> what I would recommend is you buy a beer kit. And when I say recommend, what I mean by that is that um, you can buy cheap kits, um, probably for about five or six pounds, but you have to put a lot of sugar in the barrel as well. Um, this one's probably about 18 pounds, and it's a pale ale, and it'll give us about 36 to 40 pints, depending on how strong you want it. Uh, so basically, um, what you've got is inside the kit, you're going to get this. Okay, so you've got a yeast, two sausage of yeast. You've got some hops, which you add later on in the fermenting process, which I'll explain to you. And basically, you've just got two cans of malt, uh, which is like hops and malt and barley, which is all combined. So there's two of those. Okay, so that's what you're going to get in your kit. Actually, I've just got another one as well. Like that. Uh, yeah, some more hot pellets there as well. So um, they don't always have those in, but in this particular kit, it actually has. Okie dokie. Right, so the next thing we need is one of these. A fermenting bin, okay? Pretty straightforward. Lid, bin. That's where you're going to brew your beer, which we'll be showing you afterwards. So your beer is going to go in there and uh, we'll fill it all with water. So you need one of those. Not much money, they're about, I don't know, about five pound, five, ten pounds, something like that for that. Then you're gonna need this little monkey here, which is basically just a piece of plastic tube. It's a siphon tube, okay? So basically when the beer is ready to be barreled, this will go into the bucket and you suck it up and you pour the beer from in here into your barrel, okay? So that's that. Next thing you need, really important, is this, which is a hydrometer. And that will just tell you when your beer, basically your beer is ready to uh, be barreled for secondary fermentation. So all you do is you just pop it into the beer uh, at various processes. By the way, this whole process for the barrel will be about 10 days. And what will happen is this will actually go down on here and it'll tell you when it's ready to be put into the barrel for it's uh, another week or so. So one of those, again, not expensive. Need one of those. You also need one of these. This is an airlock. Uh, to make sure that the beer's sterile, uh, you just literally put this into the, box, the top of the barrel here just goes in there you pop a bit of water in or some people like to put a bit of gin in and that will just basically let you know really when it's sort of fermented because it stopped the bubbling so you need one of those <coughs> and you also need one of these which is a gas cylinder initially they're about 15 pound to buy and this charges the barrel up so that when you pour the beer uh, it comes out charged and with a, a sort of beer head on like you traditionally know um, these are about £15 initially to buy the barrel, it's like buying a gas cylinder, but after that when you refuel it up, the last ages, they're only about 4 or £5 after that one. Uh, so that's pretty much it. The uh, the last thing I want to show you is the um, the actual barrel that we're going to barrel it into, so come and follow me and we'll do that. Ready? Yeah. Okay guys, welcome back. The last thing we're going to need is this. This is a beer barrel, uh, very hard plastic because uh, it does get quite a bit of pressure in it. Beer tap at the bottom. So basically what's happened is you brew your beer, that then goes from that ba barrel with using the siphon tube into this, and then you're gonna leave this for about another sort of 10, 10 days, something like that, just to completely do what they call a secondary fermentation. On the top here, you've got a special adapter, which you were uh, basically screw this into and that the cylinder that will actually charge the barrel just give me a bit of a telling how, how it happens now that will actually charge the barrel like so and that gives you a really good 
grotty head. Okay, so that's it. That's the last thing you need. All right, guys. Right, okay, so the first very, very important thing is we need to sterilize our equipment. So what we're doing is, you'll get this from your homebrew shop, it's just literally like some powder, and that's the sterilizing powder. So all you do is, what I usually do, is even when you buy it new, the barrel, uh, or if you've not used one before, literally, probably about two dessert spoons full into there, pour hot water into it from your sink, okay, Fill it up and put everything in. We've got a big stirring spoon here. Put it all inside the whole lot. The pipe, everything, apart from the, well, the, uh, that little cap as well. Put that all in there and then pour your powder in and then run it up, right up to the top with hot water. You can do sometimes in the bathroom or the bath if it's easier with the shower head or whatever. And then leave it for probably about, I don't know, leave it for about half an hour to an hour. And then empty it all out, wash it all out, and then you're good to go. Right, okay, here we go, let's start brewing. This is the good bit. So first thing to do, boil the kettle. Really, really important. Fill it right up and boil the kettle because that's gonna help you um, be able to mix the malt into a, a more manageable state, okay? so. Kettle's boiling, and what we're going to do now is we've got two cans. I've opened them up, okay. Usual thing, like a normal can opener, and we're literally just going to empty all this in, all this lovely stuff in. In fact, what I'll do is I'll do them both like that because it does take a while. I'm just empty it all into your barrel. Okay, and then what we're going to do is pour the boiling water in when these have come through. Right, okay guys, once you've emptied all that in, you're going to have a lot of residual stuff here in the, you know, in each cylinder. So what you need to do is, we mustn't waste that at all. When I said to you boil the kettle, we're going to fill these in, try and get the, the stuff off the lid, pour it all in. Okay. Into there. And then what we're gonna do is get a sterilized spoon. Here's one I sterilized earlier. Just give it a really good stir around. We need all of this. Just get it all off the side, scrape that into there. A really good stir. Same with this one. And you'll feel it loosen up because of the hot water. Remind yourself you don't cut yourself as well, because they are pretty sharp. And then basically just leave that for about five minutes and then we're going to pour the rest of that into here. Okay guys, that is now ready to go in. So one really big tip, and I've done this before, make sure you get a cloth, okay? Because that is boiling hot water with metal. If you try and pick it up, you're gonna burn yourself. So get a cloth and pour in all of that. Just checking the tin, yeah, it's completely fine, that one now. Same with this one. And you've got everything out of the tin. Right, so here we are once again. Next bit, what we're gonna do is stir it all up. Boil the kettle again, fully, right up to the top. Boil the kettle and pour it in. And see it brew. Okay, and then I'm actually gonna put it on again, the kettle, um, because the What's really important is the water, when we have the cold water, the actual end product, when it's actually topped right up to the top, needs to be uh, of a certain temperature so that the yeast will actually uh, activate itself. If it's cold, it won't happen. So it's gotta be relatively warm. Um, so give it a really good stir. You'll find it's absolutely sludgy as heck.
and then we're going to top it up. So what I've done is I've boiled the kettle once more because this is really important. It's got to stay to a certain temperature for when you sprinkle the yeast on top so that the yeast will actually uh, not fall onto what they call a cold brew. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're giving it a really good stir. Just keep adding cold water into this. But also, take your boiling kettle. You probably need a couple of boils on these, maybe even three. Just keep adding that, a little bit at a time. This is going to make us about 36 to 40 pints. Um, just give it a little tap on your finger and just make sure the temperature is sort of lukewarm. It just needs a little bit more of this. So it should be okay, so we're just going to top that right up, keep stirring it. And you know, mate, it's great fun when you're stirring it because it goes round and round and round like this. And then I just go back the other way like this. And uh, it's all good fun. I'm actually going to leave it at that for this brew because it actually, I just want it to be a little bit stronger. Um, so you know uh, I'm, as I said I'm just going to leave it like that not topping it up to right to the maximum level because I want the brew to be a bit stronger so um, so that's it so really what we need to do now is just I've washed my hands and I'm just really care that's just lukewarm that's lovely just nice and tepid that's basically what you need for um, and then all we're going to do is pop it down sprinkle the yeast on and uh, We'll see what happens from there. Tomorrow morning will be an interesting one because that will be when the beer and the yeast will start <coughs> working together and it will produce what they call a wart. Not a normal wart, a W-R-O-R-O-W-O-R-T wart. So yeah, so there we go. In fact, what we'll do is we'll, we'll probably actually just sprinkle it on now. I'm gonna sprinkle the yeast on now, the magical yeast. I actually get two sachets with this particular kit. Literally just sprinkle that round. As so long as the water's lukewarm, it mustn't, mustn't be cold at all, otherwise you may as well forget the whole thing. So sprinkle that on. Uh, with this kit, you actually get another one as well. Here. And sprinkle that one on as well. And this is quite a light brew this one the last one I did was quite a dark one but this is a pale ale um, in fact I'll just tell you exactly which one it is it's Woodford's 40 pint um, Bure Gold it's called it's a golden ale and you actually get these extra hot sachets as well which uh, we're going to put those in about four days into the brewing process so uh, we'll be popping those in our home back as well for you. so that's it guys that's pretty much where we're up to for the first bit um, and then we're gonna let this basically do its bit I'll film it tomorrow because you'll see how it is now if you just want to have a look how it is now and then we've got yeast on the top and then tomorrow you'll see what it will be like and it'll be totally different right guys really important I'm just gonna pop the lid on pop the airlock on like so just press it lightly down the lid and that's just to make sure it keeps sterile and if you just pop your little airlock in there and that will start bubbling once it starts fermenting that will start bubbling really important thing guys is make sure if it's the wind to make sure you put it near a radiator or something like that so it keeps warm it's got to got to stay quite warm for it to to keep brewing if it's a summer, maybe originally, once it starts fermenting, maybe put a couple of hot water bottles around it. I know it sounds crazy, but just to keep it warm. And then once it's once it starts fermenting, then, then you're good to go. Okay, guys, so here we go. It's been about a day, two days, and uh, this is basically what you're looking at. I've added the hot pellets uh, that were in, but you can see how it's um, forming. That's what they call the wart. Um, and it has actually gone down a tidge from sort of like there 
so uh, it smells fantastic though really nice so uh, so that's what you're looking for anyway and then that'll go and then gradually you'll see the yeast go down to the bottom of the cylinder uh, so it's going to take about 10 days to brew right so we are at the end of the fermentation process so what i'm just going to do now is show you uh, what it looks like um basically taking the lid off before as you can see here there's a line around here and this was at the top of its fermentation when the water, as they call it, uh, was as high as it would get. Uh, so looking in here, uh, you can tell really by eye that there's no bubbles bubbling as such. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put in the hydrometer, which is this. Um, and it's really important you have one of these so you can gauge where the actual process is up to. Um, so just give it a little twiz like that and then this one is coming in it's going to be quite a strong one actually this one it's coming in at just under a thousand and ten so basically that is pretty much ready to go to be barreled so what I'm going to do now is we're going to barrel the beer from here into this keg which has been fully sterilized okay so we'll uh, we'll crack on with that okie dokie you're going to need a siphon pipe again you'll have got that with the original kit make sure it's sterilized uh, this is just to really stop on any of the sediments coming through so literally just pop it in not all the way down to the bottom uh, you can see the yeast line there at the bottom so we don't want to disturb that so what we're going to do is I'll put it in about halfway Put your barrel on the floor so it's lower than this barrel so that you can siphon the the um, beer into it so what you do is give it a really good old uh, suck like that and there you go obviously make sure that tap is closed really important just here make sure it's in the off position otherwise you'll have beer leaking out on the floor everywhere so we're going to drain that down and uh, We'll come back to it in a minute and I'll show you when it's all in the barrel. Right, when, you, when you're actually doing the siphoning down, if you just have a look in here, um, keep the, we don't want this pipe near the bottom, near the yeast. So just keep it near the top. If you can see there, it's just gonna, just there literally. So it's still running down, but just keep it near the top and just feed it as it goes down. That's really important then because you're not getting all this yeast here which you can see the line here being dragged up as well we want to keep that where it is okay right guys we're getting right near down to the bottom now one thing i did admit to tell you is when you're doing this job it takes about five minutes always make sure you've got a beer ready anyway um just have a little slurp and enjoy the afternoon we're in lockdown at the moment so we're uh, we're currently in uh, what in now? I use it on April, end of April now, two thousand twenty. So have a slurp, enjoy it. And that, guys, is it. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put this in a room that's relatively warm. Okay, still needs to have a little bit of warmth with it, um, and that's what they call then the second. All right, guys, so there we go. So everything's barreled, uh, it's ready to go. Make sure this is really tight here because it can leak from here. So make sure that is doubly tight, like that, because if it can do, it will do from there. Um, basically, what we're gonna do now is gonna put this in a nice um, warmish place. It doesn't have to be really warm or anything like that. And this is then gonna do what they call secondary fermentation and then you probably need to leave it for about five or six days and then you're going to be having some lovely beer sure. what we're going to do now is add a little bit of sugar just to induce the firm in the secondary fermentation process so i'll do that for you now okay guys so in here i've got about three dessert spoons full of sugar so literally now this barrel i'm just going to add that to the barrel and that will induce the secondary fermentation put your lid on make sure it's well tight and there's a little seal under here actually which it does say just put a little bit of Vaseline or something on there and that will actually make sure it gets a good seal 
Now, it's really important that when you've done this, every now and again, maybe every sort of evening or day in the morning, just release this very slowly because the, bar the barrel might build up quite a bit of pressure. If it's just let a little bit of pressure off it and then keep doing that for about six to seven days, then you've got your this when you actually do want to drink your beer just give it a little screw on onto there i won't do it now but give it a little charge a little twist and you'll have yourself a lovely pint of homebrew so there you go hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you have please like and subscribe and we'll see you soon okay guys i hope you enjoyed the video of me making some homebrew really recommend it it's great fun uh, I'm just going to pour a pint now. So I've charged the cask now with this, pouring a nice beer. Cheers. See you later. Mm.